guys, it's the Island Girl, and I'm back with another reaction video for you today. And today I'm reacting to the history of Britain. So we're going to get right into this one. So if you're new to my channel, it's the first time here, come on in, right back, put a smile on your face, and enjoy. For my regular schmegla day one, sweetie pie, sweetie poos, come on in, rock back, relax, and enjoy. All right, we're going to get right into this one. I'm getting this one from AJ Merrick. So let's get into this video shout out to all my members thank you so much guys for your support really appreciate it all right let's get into this video here we go now the united kingdom is a nation located in the british isles made up of england scotland wales and northern ireland oh Thousands of years ago, the Isles were inhabited by long-forgotten pre-Celtic people, known as the Beaker Culture, named for their distinctive pottery beakers. Little is known of them, but it has been suggested that these people laid the foundations for the mysterious Stonehenge, a series of heavy standing stones which were transported from 150 miles away and arranged to form a calendar, marking the days of the summer and winter solstice. Over time, waves of Celtic-speaking people arrived from the European continent, who soon came to form the Britonic, Gaelic and Pictish people. These people were not a unified people, but were rather many tribes who shared a similar pagan religion, language and oh, okay. culture. The Romans invaded conquering what's now England and Wales, but failed to conquer the Pictish tribes to the north. The Romans launched several campaigns into this land they called Caledonia. However, their fortifications were soon overrun and abandoned, and they retreated to Hadrian's Wall. Their conquered lands were incorporated into the Roman Empire, becoming the province of Britannia. They brought Roman customs and laws, improved infrastructure and connected many towns and cities with Roman roads. When the Romans left, there was a great migration of Germanic tribes. These were the Jutes, Angles and Saxons, with their language Old English. Their settlement pushed many Britons to areas in Wales, Brittany, and a kingdom known as Dumnonia, while Scotland eventually evolved into four kingdoms. Hold on, this is pretty interesting. So, Scotland evolved into four kingdoms. And, and when he said Britannia, it, do you know what popped into my mind, guys? Britannia, Britannia. Listen, when he said that, it's, it's, so, it's so amazing to... to know how everything comes together. They evolved into four kingdoms. The smallest of these were the Scots, who were originally from Ireland, the Britons of Strathclyde, the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Bernicia, and the Picts of Alba. For unknown reasons, the Jutes disappeared from history, but the Angles and Saxons eventually formed seven kingdoms. Wessex, Sussex, Kent, Essex, East Anglia, Mercia, and Bernicia became Northumbria. After the collapse of Dumnonia, the remaining territory of Cornwall fought against the powerful Kingdom of Wessex. Cornwall eventually fell under the control of Wessex, but it managed to keep its own culture. Wales at this point was also made up of several separate kingdoms, the largest being Gwynedd in the north, Powys in the east, and Dufford to the south. The British Isles soon saw numerous Norse raiders from Scandinavia. These were the Vikings, and they began settlement on many of the Scottish Isles, the Isle of Man, and they even founded the city of Dublin in Ireland. The Scots and the Pig. These invasions, man, this is crazy. Vikings, this is the invasion first. Wow, this is, I'm telling you, they went through a lot. Then decided to unite under Kenneth MacAlpine to form the Kingdom of Alba. The Kingdom of Alba grew strong over the years, and eventually Strathclyde was brought into the fold. Meanwhile, Danish Vikings arrived in the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms for conquest. After fighting the King of Wessex, Alfred the Great, the Dane Law was formed, a land where the laws of the Danes held influence over the Anglo-Saxons, controlling the region and its affairs. The Anglo-Saxons eventually defeated the last Viking King of York, Eric Bloodaxe, and Athelstan became the first King of the English. 
although the newly formed Kingdom of Denmark would conquer England and even found a short-lived Danish dynasty under Canute. The Norsemen had a dramatic impact on the Isles, so it's no wonder some words in the English language have Norse origin. After defeating formidable sea raiders from Ireland, the Western Isles, Scandinavia and Anglo-Saxon forces from Mercia, Griffith ap Llewellyn subdued his rivals in southwest Wales. Llewellyn became the only Welsh king ever to rule over the entire territory of Wales. Wow. He was defeated by the English Earl Harold Godwinson and killed by his own men, leading to the Welsh kingdoms splitting apart once more. At the death of Edward the Confessor, there was a succession dispute between four claimants. Harold Godwinson was elected as king, and managed to defend England from an invasion by the Norwegian king Harold Hardrada. However, Harold had to march his army south to defend against Duke William of Normandy, who had crossed the English Channel. According to tradition, at the Battle of Hastings, Harold was killed by an arrow to the eye, and the Norman invaders were victorious. The new King William defeated a number of rebellions, built a new design. We, 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 we. There's so many things that make up a country, man. When you stop to really listen to the history, ah, oh, so many violence. Yeah. Of castles called Moat and Baileys and introduced a number of reforms, like trial by combat and the Doomsday Book. The Norman dynasty invaded into South Wales and parts of Ireland, creating the Lordship of Ireland. At court, nobles spoke and conducted sessions in the Anglo-Norman language, which endured for centuries and left an incredible mark in development of modern English. Okay. After a brief civil war, Henry II would marry Eleanor of Aquitaine, establishing the Angevin Empire, beginning a long rivalry against France. Richard the Lionheart defended much of this territory, and also became a central Christian commander during the Third Crusade achieving considerable victories against his Muslim counterpart, Saladin. Under King John, heavy taxes were imposed on his barons in order to pay for his expensive foreign wars. The barons rebelled and forced John to sign the Magna Carta, a charter that established the principle that everyone was subject to the law, even the king, guaranteeing the rights of individuals, the right to justice, and the right to a fair trial. Nice. Nice. Most of North Wales remained independently ruled by several Welsh princes, until 1216, when Llewellyn the Great became the ruler of the Principality of Wales. This would be the case until Edward I, who conquered Wales in 1284, effectively becoming part of England. At the death of King Alexander III, Scotland was left with 14 rivals for succession. To prevent civil war, the Scottish magnates asked Edward I of England to elect a claimant. John Balliol was elected king, but was constantly undermined by Edward, who opposed Scottish independence. Edward decided to launch several campaigns to conquer Scotland and depose King John, to which he acquired the nickname Hammer of the Scots. Under a brave Scottish knight, William Wallace, the Scots mounted resistance against the English, defeating them at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. Edward marched north in person and defeated Wallace in battle, but Wallace managed to escape. He was later captured and executed, but his efforts allowed Robert the Bruce to rise up and defeat the English, securing Scottish independence. See, that's what I cannot understand about war. One man rise up and he want to rule everybody. He want to, 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 to take over everywhere. You understand me? It's crazy. But look how it is. You're fighting against... Oh, it's just... Man. When the King of France died without an heir, Edward III was technically eligible to the crown, through his mother. Oh. The French court denied his claim and instead installed Philip of Valois. Edward paid homage to Philip as he owned the lands of Gascony, and was essentially a vassal to the King of France. Due to disagreements, Edward reasserted his claim to the throne and invaded France beginning the Hundred Years' War. The English achieved notable victories at the Battle of Crecy, Poitiers and Agincourt thanks to the technical superiority of the longbow, but was unable to conquer the French with the appearance of Joan of Arc, who lifted the French spirit and turned the tide of the war. Upon the death of Edward III, an entire generation was skipped in the line of succession, which prompted bitter rivalry between several claimants. Most notably were the Houses of York and Lancaster. Oh. Tensions were high until a bloody age of warfare erupted between these two factions in the Wars of the Roses. 
It's so in-depth and complicated, this period will likely become a video of its own. Oh, wow. The wars ended with the arrival of the Tudor dynasty. Henry VIII, wanting a divorce, split with the church, creating his own Church of England. This ultimately led to a series of religious differences between future English monarchs. In between his six wives and naval adventures, Henry gave Wales representation in Parliament, and created the Kingdom of Ireland, oh. but realistically he only controlled an area known as the Pale. In addition, Henry's paranoia and suspicion amounted to tens of thousands of executions, including his friends and wives. During the 16th How cruel can you be? Execute your friends? Their wives, family, jeez. I'm telling you, man, when a man feel like he has power to do so many things, you know. It's sad. Wow. 16th century, the largest and most powerful empire was Spain, under King Philip II. England, under Elizabeth I, were helping Dutch rebels reject Spanish rule, and many English privateers were also intercepting Spanish silver on its journey back from the New World. Oh, wow. This angered the Spanish king, and the final straw came when Elizabeth had Mary Queen of Scots executed, because she did not want Scotland falling under Catholicism. The Spanish Armada, consisting of 130 ships, was deployed to invade England. At the Battle of Gravelines, an English victory forced the Spanish fleet to sail around the British Isles, before storms in the north of Scotland destroyed the remaining ships. In retaliation, the English led by Sir Francis Drake amassed their own armada to invade Spain, but this too became a failed endeavour. Wow. Born in this period, William Shakespeare became a renowned poet, playwright and actor, who contributed significantly to English literature. When Queen Elizabeth of England died without an heir, her closest male relative was James VI of Scotland. James was elected as King of England and Scotland in a personal union, although the countries remained separate political entities. As the first monarch to rule the entire island of Great Britain, several assassination attempts were made by Catholic conspirators. One such assassination attempt was the gunpowder plot by Guy Fawkes, who tried to blow up Parliament. So now i understand the guy fox situation based on what he's explaining as because i just did a video with that i'll put the link right here that is if i didn't watch that then i wouldn't have known what he's talking about and it was like ding 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 that is crazy wow so you can, can you imagine it's amazing how much a small country has so this small country has such an impact on the world with so many things, so many stuffs. They're, they're, they're bouncing from left to right and yet still there. Wow. After a failed colony known as Roanoke, England established a successful colony known as Jamestown, Jamestown. which would eventually evolve into the 13 colonies. Wow. At first, expeditions to the New World were mainly driven by religious motives, which mm. were predominantly to convert the natives to their faith. But colonies became more profitable, as demand for New World crops like tobacco and sugar increased. British so ships Jamaica. also made a monopoly on the transportation of captive African slaves that crossed the Atlantic to the Americas. Millions of Africans were shipped in cramped, horrific conditions oh. to work on brutal plantations in the Americas, and essentially became property to their masters. For 300 years, this practice continued in the British Empire until it was fully abolished in 1833, this period also saw a wave of plantations in Ireland, where Irish lands were confiscated and given to English and Scottish settlers. Tensions would rise between... How sad. People live in there and you go and take their, their land and give it to other settlers. I, 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 every time I stop to listen and hear history, it, 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 my mind goes from left to right because I'm like, how cruel can you be, man, to just, oh, just heartless, you know? But I know it's the past, don't get me wrong, guys. I get it, it's the past. So it's just, you know, just sitting here and listening to it, it's a lot, a lot. Tensions would rise between Charles I and Parliament. Following disagreements, conflicts between royal and parliamentary authority within England led to the English Civil War. The country became divided between parliamentarians, known as the Roundheads, and royalists, known as okay. the Cavaliers. 
Under Oliver Cromwell and the New Model Army, the Parliamentarians defeated Charles and executed him for treason. Cromwell became Lord Protector and dissolved the monarchy, but shortly after his death it was restored under Charles II. Charles II married Catherine of Braganza, and when she arrived from Portugal she introduced the greatest beverage of all time. Tea. Tea had been used by China for centuries, but its arrival in the 17th century captured the interest of the English aristocracy, and soon captivated every other Englishman. In 1685, a Catholic James II became king in a largely Protestant nation. James's daughter Mary and her Dutch husband William were both Protestant, and many nobles unhappy with the Catholic king invited William to become king. William found considerable support when he invaded, and he was soon crowned King William III in what became known as the Glorious Revolution. Although William's supporters dominated the government, there remained a significant following for James II in the Scottish Highlands. Clan MacDonald of Glencoe was one such group who had not been prompt in pledging allegiance to the new monarch. For this reason alone, 38 members of the clan were murdered in what became known as the Massacre wow. of Glencoe. After Scotland's failed colonial endeavours in Nova Scotia and Panama, and an economic crisis in the 1690s, there was a union between England and Scotland, forming the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Oh. The House of Stuart had ruled Britain for just over a century, but ended with the death of Queen Anne. Sophia of Hanover was the granddaughter of James I, and her son George became king. Great Britain soon found itself drawn into several European wars most notable being the War of the Spanish Succession and the Seven Years' War. Victories in these wars resulted in territory for the Empire, particularly in North America, although it resulted in considerable debt. In order to make up for this debt, King George III ordered heavy taxes be placed on the 13 colonies. This, among other reasons, culminated into the American War of Independence, and with financial help from France and Spain, the Americans were victorious. The East India Company, which was founded by Elizabeth I, had grown rapidly, and even operated its own military and controlled a sizeable amount of territory. The company had set up fortified warehouses where they traded with many India rulers, acquiring important luxuries like textiles and spices. One of the most important cities of all was Bengal, as it had a large taxable population. The governor of Bengal, Robert Clive, ordered that the population grow opium to export to China, instead of growing food as it proved to be a great source of income. However, when a famine struck, it resulted in the deaths of millions of people. Jeez. What? Wow. I, I gotta be honest, guys. It's, it's, it's just listening to, to, to this man is... It's, it's, it's crazy. The amount of stuff that you can learn just listening to this video right here. You understand what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's something. It's so much history. You guys have so much history. Mm. But you, you know, it's, it's crazy. Now, now you can understand the diversity pertaining to the, the culture and the innovations of you know you understand the different in, and and the beautiful languages that you guys have the, 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 the you know the diverse language or dialect that you guys have is just amazing not to mention the the greatest gift you give to tea <laughs> tea i love me some tea meanwhile captain james cook arrived at new zealand and the southeast coast of australia although he wasn't the first to discover the area because of past Portuguese and Dutch explorers. However, unlike the Dutch and Portuguese, Britain claimed it as their new penal colony, known as New South Wales, with the first convicts arriving in 1778. A new threat had emerged from France, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> Napoleon had come to dominate most of Europe, but Britain's advantage was that she was an island, and the Royal Navy had become a major force at sea. Invasion of Britain was near impossible, and in a series of coalitions, Napoleon was defeated. 
by the end of the Napoleonic Wars, Britain was growing rapidly into a superpower based on their supremacy of naval engineering. Furthermore, in Ireland, the Great Famine struck. A disease killing potato plants. I noticed he mentioned um, slavery part uh, briefly, but he didn't. One thing I, I, I wanted him, which I wish he had said was that they ended slavery. You understand that Britain ended slavery. I wish that was there, even though, he, you know, he touched on the fact of what slavery took place and it was brief, but I, I wish that was there because that was um, uh, pivotal. Ireland, which had merged with Britain, relied heavily on this crop for food. But the British government forced Ireland to export what little food they had to other areas. Mm. Without any aid or food, Ireland's population plummeted by half due to starvation and emigration to countries like the United States. Wow. Things weren't looking so great in India either, as India was rebelling against company rule. The East India Company had employed many Indian soldiers known as Sepoys, who were under the command of British soldiers. These Sepoys grew increasingly unhappy, and a revolt soon occurred, yet it quickly failed due to a lack of unity between Indians. After the rebellion, the British government took direct control, with Queen Victoria being declared Empress of India. During the 19th century, the world was forever changed by the Industrial Revolution. Society was transformed by technological advances and increasing mechanisation, and would launch Britain to global dominance. Some of the greatest innovations and inventions were the sewing machine, the fire extinguisher, steam-powered engines and turbines, the electric motor and photography. The telegraph was also a major invention, as a message could now be sent from Britain to India in a matter of hours. The establishment that. of railways and trains also transformed transport forever. Instead wow. of travelling days by horse and carriage, it now only took a matter of hours by train. Engineering and communication advances not only united the empire, they triggered a manufacturing boom like no other. People flocked from rural areas to city centres for jobs. Productivity reached an all-time high, but the consequences of mass migration resulted in extremely cramped and polluted cities. Oh. However, wow. I didn't know you guys invented the sewing machine, fire distinguisher. You guys, I tell you, you guys are amazing! Amazing, amazing. The more I listen, the more I learn. The more of these videos, the more I learn, and I, I'm, I'm in love with you guys. Um, but, but I understand where he's saying that, um, you know, everybody starts flocking with mass production. Everybody starts flocking, so the cities become more crammed and, you know, overcrowded and get more difficult for, for people to live. With these problems that were generated, it resulted in an improved sewage system. Okay. Newcastle focused on shipbuilding. Manchester the cotton industry, Liverpool became a major trading centre, Middlesbrough oh. fixated itself on iron and steel works, the presence of iron ore, limestone and large coal deposits in the West Midlands and South East Wales prompted the establishment of iron works, and Scotland boomed in the linen industry. Nice. The Victorian era also saw a major change in society, as families from the poorest backgrounds gained access to education, although it was much stricter than today's standards. Nice. The 1860s also saw the rise of the greatest food combination ever, fish and chips. Fished. Towards the end of the 19th century, European powers came together at the Berlin Conference to divide Africa between them. A oh. group in South Africa known as the Boers, who were originally Dutch settlers, proved difficult for the British. The Boers lived in two nations, the Free Orange States and the Republic of Transvaal and both resisted British rule using guerrilla warfare. To counter this, the British placed many women and children in their tens of thousands into concentration camps, where many died from starvation and disease. Britain became a major player in the First World War, and many men proudly volunteered to serve and protect their country. The Great War, as it was called, saw the use of new technology, such as dreadnoughts, warplanes, artillery, machine guns, grenades, chemical weapons, bolt-action rifles, and the first use of the tank. Many faced horrific conditions in the trenches and witnessed gruesome battles. Millions died and many returned home shell-shocked by what they had seen. The Empire reached its territorial height in 1921 after gaining territory from Germany and the crumbling Ottoman Empire. The Empire now ruled over 400 million people, and controlled one quarter of the world's landmass. 
Wow. But the reality was, Britain could no longer afford to build bases or ships to defend its empire as it had before 1914. Ireland finally managed to break away from British rule and formed the Irish Free State, and shortly after became a republic. The Second World War was more brutal and horrific than the first. Most of Europe had fallen under German occupation, and under Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Britain stood strong during the Battle of Britain and the Blitz. Britain were extremely successful at intercepting and decoding enemy communications, with the likes of Alan Turing who cracked the German Enigma code. Nice. The war ended with an Allied victory, but many nations within the Empire felt a desire for independence, and it was clear the Empire was about to break. India was one such nation, who were ready to declare their independence. Mohandas Gandhi practiced a non-violent approach, and this proved successful, as shortly after India gained independence. The Commonwealth of Nations was formed to improve relations and economic ties with former colonies. Good. This still remains today, with 53 members united by language, history, culture, and shared values of democracy. The British Empire officially ended with Hong Kong, Britain's last colony, being handed over to China in 1997. The Empire committed many atrocities on many different people, imposing their culture and civilization while often wiping out native ones. On the other hand, this brought about globalization and the uniting of the modern world, and without such innovations and industrialization, the world might have been a very different place. The United Kingdom suffered a small economic recession in 2008, but has since recovered. It is a multicultural society with each region retaining a presence of its history and culture. If you ever visit, look out for the Welsh cake, the haggis, the whiskey, the Chelsea bun, the Parmo, the Cumberland sausage, the Yorkshire pudding, or the Cornish pasty. The UK remains a member of NATO, United Nations, and the World Trade Organization, and uses the pound currency. In 2016, a referendum resulted in 51.9% of voters in favour to leave the European Union. Although the countries within the United Kingdom became divided on the matter, leading to the many questions of its future unity. Thank you for watching. I ain't gonna lie to you. This was very, very, it's an absolutely, absolutely incredible country with so much history, achievements, unique culture. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And when you stop to listen, I know there's so many invasion took place, so many war took place, but when you stop to look at, when it all boils down, when you, you sit there and you listen to everything and look at, look where it's coming from to where it is, it's crazy. It's, it's so much that was unpacked a while ago in this video that I kept my mind blown. Seriously, guys, blown. I cannot wait to come and experience because the you. I want to take my time and come and experience. I want to go to different places, um, you know, soaking the culture, soaking the food, you know, the, the different accent, even though maybe I can't even understand some of them. But I'm, 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 I can't wait. I can't wait to just come and have that feel. You see, Island Girl and I'm running out of here. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for watching this one. Don't forget to go in the comment section. Tell me what you'd like me to react to next, guys, because it will be done. Love you guys, and I'll definitely, definitely catch you guys in another video. Bye.